Det bunde for dele. Det er lidt klart. Hvad er det? Ej, ej, ej. The must have in your bike, eh? Clutch yeah, yeah. cable, throttle cable, uh -huh. levers, mm -hmm. the levers. In the previous video, I told you about us getting to Kericho. This is after uh, about 264 kilometers of uh, ride all the way from Nairobi, several stops on the way, uh, enjoying scenic landscapes, uh, coming down all the way to Kericho. So we get to Kericho, um, get to this nice hotel where they have a very good parking, park our bikes there, uh, those with bike covers, cover their bikes <laughs> and then we get to the hotel uh, we freshen up we, we have our dinner and a few of us uh, wanted to check out Kericho at night and just explore <laughs> bikers are fun as well so some of us went to explore uh, Kericho at night and uh, have fun however quite a number of us went to rest so I was in the group that went to rest reason being uh, we had a long journey uh, and my all my batteries especially my camera batteries were off so I needed time to go and uh, recharge them offload the memory cards and all that and so I went to, to my hotel room uh, and so I, was, I had a fantastic evening fast forward to day two early morning the sun is out Apparently, I didn't know Kericho can get this hot. I, I, I had this perception of Kericho is quite cold. Uh, but this morning was, was quite warm. Uh, not really hot, but quite warm. So we have our breakfast, refuel our bikes, and then go to Moy Garden, where we were to start our ride around the Kericho CBD. From Moy Gardens, we have police escort, so we ride around Kericho CBD, that is the central business district, uh, just uh, letting the locals and the residents know that we are in town. Uh, we have an event that is happening at Moy Garden, uh, and so anyone who has uh, an opportunity can join us, and so we ride around the town. We are actually escorted by the local border border guys uh, who have an association and so and so this takes us around 10 to 15 minutes just a slow ride and then we get back to my garden notably the video before this one I actually shared the full cut of the speeches uh, at my garden so just to hear about these speeches if you haven't listened uh, you can you can refer to my previous video. I will be sharing a link uh, up on this on this video for you to check it out.
Mungu mnakaribisho sana katika hafla yetu siku ya leo hapa Do as I do, not as I say. So, head, shoulders, na apa hiba na knees. Ah, tuanza ukweli. Do as I, turn the head, shoulders, knees, shoulders, head. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It is pleasure being with you guys here. I'm so much humbled when I see the ladies riding. It is a challenge, and I assure you, in the next one month, the people of Kericho, you're going to see me on a motorbike. Very soon. It's very clear that Kericho has come a long way in the fight against GBB. I work for PEPFAR. Um, and CDC, um, and as well as represent uh, two biking organizations, Private Bikers Association of Kenya and the Women's Bikers Association of Kenya. Um, in terms of working in other counties, I am seeing uh, one clear distinction in this county that I don't see somewhere everywhere else, and that is the integration and a multi-sectoral yes. process. So I, we've heard from the, the police department, the county commissioners, education, uh, the community, so we continue this fight, we continue doing the good work that you're doing here in this county. I want to let you know that each of the 20 riders here have now become GB, GBB champions. Woo! And once we're done with this ride, they're going to continue their work day to day, uh, throughout the year and beyond. So we hope that we can also influence our communities, our families, our Nimbakumis, our organizations for the same fight. Thank you. Thank you. So after the speeches, we head out with the final destination, Komabe, that holds a number of stops on the way. Uh, we'll be stopping at uh, Kipsi Tet, then Ahero, uh, then uh, Katito Market, Arambira Beach. It's still not easy. Um, in this ride, I was actually the second uh, sweeper. And being the second sweeper means that we had bikes uh, that is high CC bikes and then we have the low CC bikes and so we split into two groups whereby we had first a group uh, which was which now was sweeping and then there was the slower group which we have now the uh, overall sweeper and so you will notice that many a times whenever we were starting a ride I would, I would um, leave some bikers behind because I wanted to catch up with the group one and, and sweep for that group. Unfortunately, uh, most of the time we would ride together and so I would, I would be more like uh, a support marshal, just ensuring checking on, on the bikers, if we have junctions, stopping cars and all that. And so you'll notice quite a number of times I would speed up uh, just to, to ensure that uh, I'm able to, to either to stop cars or whenever we have some bikers who are left behind, especially when we have junction, so that I can ensure uh, we have taken the right turn. And so you'll notice uh, that was happening quite a lot. As we left Kericho town, uh, we had a few bikers who had been left behind. The good thing we had a very good uh, uh, ride leader. Uh, and so Fatma, uh, at this junction, she slowed down and actually stopped so that all the riders who are left behind could catch up and so we don't miss the, the right turn.
one of the sweet moments about riding uh, in a group is the sweetness of listening to to bikes, uh, their sounds. Apart from listening to your bike that probably you are used to, so you are able to listen to other bikes, the sound of their engines, of their exhaust. And so this ride was a quite a fast ride. And so I had this opportunity being a sweeper of the first group, listening to the Honda Africa, Africa Twin, um, which had this uh, sweet sound. So you will hear it quite often. We had other bikes with sweet sound that you will hear about uh, as, as the video progresses. As earlier I had mentioned, there are moments that I would check just ensuring that the bikes that are ahead and the bikes that are uh, behind me uh, are in a line of sight. And so at some point I noticed that uh, the two bikes that were behind me were out of sight. And we had gone, let's say, for like 20 kilometers and I, I couldn't see the bikes that were behind me. And so being that we don't have a shared intercom, uh, we're on the road, so uh, there isn't that much time to stop and make calls. And probably even making a call, the person you are calling might not have uh, an intercom, so they may not be able to, to answer their phone. So I had to communicate with the other riders who were marshalling on the way. At some point, I slowed down and checked with one of the support marshals just to confirm uh, where the two bikers were good thing is that was confirmed that they were riding a bit slower um, just to to enjoy the ride uh, as they came along the route between Kericho and Hajero uh, is very scenic. Um, they are in that much of uh, hills and valleys and all that. Uh, quite a bit flat, bearing in mind that we are headed to western uh, region. And so we had this more like um, kind of flat land just for us to enjoy the scene. Uh, this green scenery and just be able to take in the freshness of, of uh, countryside, uh, wind, enjoying uh, the silence away from, from the sea and noisy Nairobi. And so this ride was quite subtle for me, uh, being that as much as we were riding quite fast because of um, uh, the many stops that we had and bearing in mind that the stops were quite distant, so I had a fantastic time um, riding fast and also taking in the landscapes and uh, the aura of, of, of this region of Kenya. Kenya is a quite a beautiful land where you, you may want to travel. Uh, the road was not busy so we didn't have uh, too many points of slowing down. We, we kept quite a good pace. I would say roughly around uh, 90 kilometers per hour on average.
so as we were riding and maintaining these high speeds uh, at some point we, we met one biker a very interesting bike uh, this was a custom bike I'll be telling you about uh, the back of this bike later on you won't believe me uh, this bike was quite customized uh, we think uh, it's a high CC bike uh, I'm about to disappoint you head panniers was was well kitted and all that and so this rider was on the way and decided to ride with us uh, and wherever we were going he would go with us so the best way that we were able to identify ourselves was through the reflectors that we had orange reflectors all branded so we were able to know who is with the, who is in our in our convoy and who is not and so i noticed this biker and i saw how enthusiastic he was about riding with us and so at some point i was like why not if you want to ride with us come along and so for like a span of a minute or so i i i, I encouraged him just to ride with us mm-hmm. catch up with our speed and all that but then i noticed that uh, <laughs> this is a small cc bike Actually, a Boxer 150cc that has been customized looks uh, quite a big bike. And so, with this revelation, I gave up with uh, sweeping him. So I let him uh, be, and then I moved on. I didn't know that he was spirited enough to catch up with us. And so this is how I met one Bernard Buire, a very enthusiastic rider, a lawn rider. From Kericho and 60 kilometers later, we got to Ahero. So we had a stopover uh, just outside the Ahero County Hospital. Mechanical 
Yeah. 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 This is the cable. This is the head. Head is the head. Then tail is the head. That's all. That's all. What happened? Oh, my 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 cable. Oh, sorry. Oh. Um, these are the only the ones that was holding the, the, the handles right here. The throttle cable? Yeah, I know. No, the oh, the flash cable. cable. Yeah, so ah. I had to change. But oh, I had the... Have, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is pretty good for the camera. Things happen. Yeah, man. I... The bunny booty. It's still a clutch. What? I had to get here. I'm going to put it in the middle of the night. I'm going to put it in the middle of the night. Hmm? What's up? I'm going to put it in the middle of the night. So you can have a chat from there. So, I'm going to put it in the middle of the night. So, in case of quick pull, you can pull it out. So, you can... So, ukifunga hii, isilingane na hii. Oh, oh ndo hii ni mimi ndiye. Si hapa tena hapa. Is this not out? Yeah. Ah. You can try it, eh? And then you let me know. So, kama hii tuna charge ngi 1000. Leo leo tuna charge 100. Because of the distance from ya. Kampea 100. Hadi nimelipia fare, nitampea 100. It's all charge it is easy at the end. Uh, the must have in your bike, eh? the clutch yeah, yeah. cable. Mm. If you you need, mm -hmm. I mean, a uh, spare clutch mm. cable, throttle cable, uh -huh. levers, mm. the levers, easy. Yeah. Because those are basic things. Yeah. So in our ride to a hero, uh, two bikes had encountered an issue. One had the um, rear indicator light break off from the light holder, and then the other one was a clutch cable that had broken off. And so it was time for us now to fix the bike. George was actually riding the bike uh, clutchless, or rather just engaging or changing the gears without using the clutch. So we are very fortunate to have a mechanic within the ride, uh, none other than Banesta. For those within the riding circles will know of Banesta, being the chair and leader of uh, Thicker Road Nyumbakumi, a very vibrant Nyumbakumi in Kenya actually the most vibrant and so uh, we get some tools some of these that I had and and his skills and so he got to work uh, changed the clutch cable fixed it to the right configuration and then we are ready now for the next ride the other bike also that had the indicator light uh, break off from the holder uh, we were able to fix that uh, with some zip ties and it was good to be on the road. Due to us now working on the bike, I, I didn't have a, an opportunity to record the events of of, of the stopover, uh, the speeches that happened and all that. So come with me as we head to Katito Market, uh, where we had a stopover at, at the hospital, and then we shall now be leaving later on to Rambira Beach. So I told you earlier about the rider who joined our, our convoy and so this was a boxer bike, a boxer brand, a 150cc bike and so we leave our hero with him heading to Katito Market. Now one interesting thing about this ride uh, or these four days that we were riding was that once the leader of the ride says we gear up then it meant that in the next five minutes we should have departed. So this rider who joined us had not caught up to that uh, culture that once we say we are leaving, then it means we are leaving now, not 10 minutes later. And so in the process, he hadn't geared up, so he, he had not put on his gloves. So we leave 
just a few oh, kilometers uh, from just about two or three kilometers from Ahero, he drops his um, gloves, and so we have to stop, pick up the gloves, uh, hand over them to him, and proceed with the ride. At this point, you'll notice there are two riders who are consistently uh, around me. There is the Africa Twin and then there is the GS, that is uh, the F800 GS. And so the F800 GS, that was our overall sweeper. And then I ensured that I stayed behind the Africa, Africa Twin because of the sound. This sound was sweet and so I enjoyed the ride and listened to this sound. So we get to Katito Market. Our meeting point, or rather the stopover, was at the uh, Sub County Hospital. So we, we stop, have a um, few speeches. At this point, now the riders who had now been cultured to understand and more like um, inducted to be ambassadors uh, of against GBV. Now it was our opportunity now to have our first or our inaugural speech besides our team leader. And so fortunately or unfortunately <laughs> I had the opportunity to be the first person to speak. And so out of the experiences that we had on the road, I was able now to share an experience uh, or other conversation that I had with one of the gentlemen telling me uh, about the stigma of men being affected by gender-based violence uh, when 
and what they are, what is happening around them. We had fun uh, with, uh, with the youth uh, who had visited, who had mentors. They also took time to take photos with the bikes. Memorable moment for them. Uh, they ushered us in and they saw us off as we left Katito Market. After leaving Katito, we had a lunch stop, and this was at Hotel Piccadilly. Not sure what really the name means, but sounds like uh, Pika and Dili, which which is uh, Deal. So we had our lunch at, at this uh, great hotel. Uh, the food wasn't that amazing, just basic normal recipe, and so. After our, our lunch, we set out to go to the beach, that is Rambira Beach. Temperatures again were quite high. Uh, you notice that some of us actually had geared down just to, to have light gear. Uh, well padded but light gear for, for this part of the journey because of the temperatures. Uh, which were now wrecking around uh, 34, 35.
Entar dulu tak kawang baca, kawang baca. Kamu kau je? Ini mama sini. Kalau sini tu yang itu bapak kerja. Kalau mana tu bapak kerja ke bawah? Mana nak ada nak warna itu ke apa? Kau je kita boleh pergi. Ada itu bapak kerja. Kau je nak kau je? Ah, teh kan. Kalau macam saya, anak. Kalau mana itu izin gua apa? Bebe, bebe, mimi. Ciao, ada tu. Ayuwa. 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 
we get to Rambira Beach where we were warmly re- received quite some good dances we had some good music local music in in Toluo and so for those who understood the language danced for those who did not we still danced as well I had quite a number of speeches a uh, few talks especially in the Toluo dialect one interesting thing about Rapira Beach resident the level of literacy is quite low and so you would find even you middle-aged people who are not able to converse in English or Swahili. After our event, we visited now the lake shore. We were able to interact with some of the fishermen. Been in the evening, it was their time now to, to set out to the deep deep sea or is deep lake and so they so that they can do their catch. One interesting thing I learned is that fishing happens at night. And so they set out uh, in the evening and then they will be back in the morning. So they will do their catch overnight. That comes to the end of day two. Thanks a lot for watching. I, I really appreciate the time that you take to, to watch. Thanks for those who have subscribed. If you have not, kindly subscribe. We are just beginning this journey. And so we have more to learn.